Hey everybody, and welcome back to the fourth episode of the Level Creation Guide for Half-Life. In the first three episodes, we learned how to use the Block, Texture, and Entity tools. We are now going to continue to learn more of Jack's tools and how to use them in creating our levels. In this episode, we are going to be learning the basics of function entities. What are function entities? A function entity is a block entity that the player can interact with. The most basic common function entity is the doors in Half-Life. Each door begins as a block that is textured to look like a door and then is transformed into a function entity to behave or function like a door. These are the four function entities we're going to be covering this episode. The sliding door, rotating door, transparent alpha textures, and breakable objects. Let's begin with the basic sliding door. Create a block with the dimensions of 96 units tall, 64 units wide, and 16 units thick. Texture the main block faces with the door texture and use the steel texture on the remaining faces. To transform this block into a function entity, Press Ctrl T and the Entity Browser will appear. This means that the block is now an entity and now we can make this block into a function entity. Type in the search bar func underscore door. There are many options we can choose from in func underscore door, but the most important of these options are the yaw compass. This compass corresponds with the top viewport and determines what direction the door will, be, will slide when opened. Let's make it slide up by pressing the drop down box and selecting up. Now our door is complete. All we need to do is create an opening in the wall for our door. Instead of resizing our wall or having to create multiple blocks, the fastest and easiest way is to place the door within the wall, make the door and wall the same thickness and right click on the door and press carve. This will delete any block in the selected blocks position. Using carve can save so much hassle. There we go, we made a perfect opening with the least amount of trouble. If you are a keen observer, you may be noticing we are missing something. Our door opens up to nothing. Let's quickly copy three of the four walls, the floor, the ceiling, and a light entity, and place it on the other side of our sliding door. Be sure to texture any null textures showing within our room and door frame, and create a small floor under the door. Let's playtest our level door in game. Yeesh, while our door works, we forgot to make our door a little thinner so it fits into the wall when it opens. But don't worry, if this happens to you at all. I've encountered these small problems and sometimes the only way is to find them is to play test the level and remember what to fix. Let's quickly fix this problem by making our door a slightly thinner and let's move on to the rotating toward entity. Let's create another block that is 96 units tall, 64 units wide, and 16 units thick. Texture the block with the door texture and carve it into our wall to make an opening. Press Ctrl T to transform our block into an entity and change this entity to Funk Door Rotating. The rotating door is nearly the same as a sliding door. The only differences are how the door opens and that it requires an extra block to work properly. Since the rotating door rotates on a pivot, we need to specify to Jack where the pivot point is. To do this, we must create a small block within our door where we wish the pivot point to be and texture that pivot point to a special texture called Origin. The Origin texture is in the same family as the Null texture, but the Origin texture tells Jack where the pivot of whatever we are using. In order for the origin texture to work for a rotating door, we must combine them both. Select both by holding down Ctrl and press Ctrl T. A window will appear asking us if we would wish to combine them. Press yes to combine them. This time, let's make our door a little thinner so it fits in within our wall better. Change the size of the door thickness from 16 to 8. Remember to texture the door frame and create a small floor underneath a rotating door. 
The side tip. If you ever need to uncombine or transform an entity back to block form, right click the entity and select the option Move to World. Now that we learned both of the doors, let's add a glass window to our room. Create a block that is 64 units tall, 128 units wide, and 16 units thick. Texture the block with a glass texture and carve it into the wall and transform it into an entity. The default entity every block transforms into is the Funk Wall Entity. The Funk Wall Entity is primarily used to save system resources for non-geometry blocks such as pipes, railings, shelves, computers, and other detailing blocks. Warning: Funk Wall should not be used for any geometry blocks that hide the outside void to the player or else it will crash the level. The Function Wall Entity has two important options we can use to make our textures transparent or alpha transparent. The Render Mode option changes how our block appears. When clicking on the drop down box, we are given half a dozen of render modes we can use. For most cases, use the Texture Render Mode. This will make our block non solid and will only display the texture in game. The FX Amount option dictates the transparency, one being almost invisible and 255 being solid. For glass, 100 to 200 is good, but for all alpha transparent textures, Use 255 because the blank sections will already be rendered out completely. To make the glass breakable, let's duplicate this block and place it somewhere on the wall and carve it in. Double click the duplicated entity and change it to funk underscore breakable. There are plenty of options to tinker with, but we don't need to do anything else for this entity to work. Be sure to texture the window frames and add a crowbar to our level so we can test out our funk breakable. Press F9 to test out our glass. Great job! You've learned the basics of function entities. Thank you so much for watching the video, and thank you for your support and feedback from the last episode. I'll continue to make these episodes, but it might take me a little bit more time to produce these due to light. I hope this video helped you with making your levels, and I hope you join me in the next episode of the Level Creation Guide for Half.